Well, it seems like everything is beginning to open up again. Last week, I even got a haircut, which is the first time in three months, which I was very grateful for. But a lot of churches, including Seabreeze, are still meeting exclusively online every Sunday. And the reason is that the number of restrictions still make it very impractical for us to meet on site and gather together. For example, we are limited to 100 people on site. We are not able to provide childcare or Sunday school, which functionally eliminates most families. Singing is highly discouraged, and everyone must wear face coverings and stay at least six feet away from each other, which makes for a really challenging church service. Now, I'm hopeful that enough of these restrictions will be lifted soon and we can meet. But while we wait, we are taking full advantage of the time, and we're doing a lot of work to get ready for that day. For example, we're redoing the entire uh, playground area in order to provide a, a place for families uh, to gather with their kids if they're not able to go inside a church service or maybe even provide an opportunity for uh, child care to take place in an outdoor environment, which is safer. Uh, we are purchasing sanitation supplies and equipment. We are replacing all of the auditorium lights with LED lights as well as other projects. Now, since indoor space is riskier than outdoor space, we are planning and preparing for a worship time outside on Center Court. Now, our hope is that some Wednesday in July, just next month, we will be able to gather in this way. We'll just have to wait and see if we're able to do that. Actually, I get emotional just thinking about that day when we gather for the first time together outside on Center Court. But for now, the fact is that as individuals, you can do a lot more than we can do together as a church. You can go out for coffee with someone or to a restaurant. You can go on walks or go to the beach or a park with others. Now, I know many of you are doing more and more with people. I know my wife and I are doing a lot more. The individual one-on-one -on -one connections have always been the most important part of church life. It's those moments where the real work of God loving us and us loving each other really is fleshed out and takes place. But right now, this one-on-one -on -one opportunity is the only way that we can see each other. So I encourage you to continue to take initiative in getting together with others. In fact, this next month in July, we're planning to offer a number of outdoor activity groups for things like gardening and hiking and surfing. So be looking for these opportunities to uh, reconnect with other people at Seabreeze. James 1, 2 through 4 says this, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, when you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. We are going through this common trial right now, and God is using this trial to grow us. But in order for that to happen, the critical part is we must allow perseverance to finish its work. Now, in our hearts, I know that we're all done with this, and we would love to get back onto our site. But the truth is, we are not done with this until God says we're done. And if we quit in our hearts and we stop persevering, then we're going to miss out on all that God wants to do in us through this time. Now, persevering is not just some passive, impatient drumming of our fingers on the table while we wait for the trial to pass. No, persevering is a very intentional leaning into what God is doing in our hearts and in our lives in the middle of the challenge. This will be over when God says it will be over. So let's allow perseverance to finish its work so that we may come out on the other side of this as a more mature and complete church. I really do look forward to the day when we can meet again, but until then, we must allow perseverance to finish its work.